Sige po, let's take our seats. So good morning everyone. Good morning, pakibati niya po ulit ang inyong katabi ng Happy, Happy New Year. Amen. So kayo po ba ay nag-party last night? Sino mga napuyat? Mga, <laughs> lahat nagtaas na kamay ha? Ako rin po ay napuyat, mga 2am na ako nakauwi, but it's good to be in God's house. Amen. Amen. Sige po, kung if it's good, really good to be in God's house, we just give Him our very best clap offering. Amen, amen. And before the year ended yesterday, uh, alam po, ang revelation sa akin ni Lord that, alam po, before na tignan natin yung 2017, nung December 31, wag natin kalimutan, di ba? Yun yung topic natin last time. To be thankful of what had happened last 2016. Why? Because it was a great year. Amen po ba dun? It was a great year, it was a fun year, it was an exciting year, and uh, before we think of our anxieties for this year, of our worries, of our uncertainties, talagang dapat lang pasalamatan natin ng Panginoon for what had happened last year. Amen po ba doon? So we just give God our very best clap offering again? Amen and amen, and we would just like to really greet you a happy, happy new year. So it's the first day of 2017, and you're excited for this year? Amen. I'm also excited for this year. And are you excited today to hear God's Word? Amen and amen. I'm also excited to share with you God's Word. And today, we're going to go back to our series. And do you know this guy again? Kailangan niyo po ba ulit ito? So, sino po yan? So, we've, we've talked about that uh, two to three weeks ago. And what's his name again? It, his name is Elijah. And itong, itong scene na to was a raven feeding him. Why? Because God had uh, inutusan niya yung raven to feed Elijah. But we're not going to talk about that anymore. What we're gonna, are we going gonna to talk about today? We're going to focus on his mantle. So yan po, ang tawag po pala dyan ay isang mantle. But right now, medyo hindi na tayo makaka-relate to that. So nagdala po ako ng props. So usually, di ba, when we were kids, when we were in our elementary days, we used something like this, right? Sino pong gumamit nito? Diba? We usually put this at our backs. Why? Kasi we don't want to perspire. We want to, to hide it. Kasi ano bang ibig sabihin ng mantle? Something that covers or conceals. So we put it at our backs. May mga kids dito in front. They put it in their backs para hindi tumagos yung pawis sa damit. Right? Para hindi siya makita. So may tinatago tayo. And right now, saan ba natin ito ginagamit ngayon? Usually, sino dito mga working na? May mga working ba dito? So maraming working, nasa office, saan natin siya ginagamit ngayon, hindi na sa box. Ginagamit na natin siya sa face, di ba? Bakit? Kasi we're trying to sleep. So pag tayo po, tinatry natin mag-sleep during lunch break, so tinatakpan natin yung face natin. Para hindi tayo makita ng office mates natin. So sana po, hindi po natin siya gagamitin during office hours. Tama po ba yun? Tama yun, di ba? And before that, alam niyo po, when I was back in elementary, sino namimiss yung elementary days nila? So I miss my elementary days and meron akong isang friend doon kasi meron, marami akong friends doon at isa doon yung sobrang piko na friend. So lagi namin siyang binubully, so ako yung nasa bully side. So kami lagi nang aasar and ang problema kasi sa guy na to, si Abraham yung name niya, talagang sobrang pikon siya. At alam mo po, there was a time, meron siyang hawak na bimpo, meron siyang hawak na mantle at sobrang pikon niya, talagang naghahamon siya ng suntukan from everybody. Tapos may pumatol po ng suntukan sa kanya but Alam mo ang weird kung paano siya nakipagsuntukan. Why? Kasi he was holding this mantle in front of him. Tinatakpan niya yung mukha niya. And yan, suntok siya ng suntok. So nawi-weirdohan po kami sa kanya. Anong, anong problema nitong tao na ito? Ba't siya sumusuntok ng may mantle in his face? So for all those years, kami po ay nasa elementary. Yun po yung pinagtatawa na namin sa kanya. Yun yung lagi yung biruan namin sa kanya. Yan, yan si Abraham, sumusuntok yan. May nakatakip na mantel. May nakatakip na bimpo sa mukha niya. So nawi-weird dohan talaga kami sa kanya. And alam po, it's just timely that last week, alam po, I learned something new. I learned to box, nag-boxing. Sino nag-boxing dito? So thank you to my friends, actually your church mates right now. Uh, natuto ako mag ng straight, ng jab, ng hook, ng uppercut. So, ingat po kayo sa akin, baka tamaan ko po kayo. So, joke lang. So, alam mo po, sa coach po doon, sa nagtitrain po doon, alam mo, wala siyang tinuro na takpan mo yung face mo ng mantle. Wala siyang tinuro na kailangan mo ng mantle para hindi ka tamaan. No such a thing. Why? Because if there's a mantle in your face, wow, it would just seem that you're hitting your target. Akala mo lang tinatamaan mo yung target mo, but in real life, walang nangyayari. You always miss your target. 
And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're in our series of A Man of God. And we're going to focus on Elijah. On ano ba tong mantle na meron si Elijah? Why? Because the prophets of that time, marami po si, uh, ang, ang dala-dala lang po ng mga prophets usually is their mantle, their piece of clothing in their lives. But you know what? You know what? In this time, in the passage that we're going to talk about today, most probably, it's only the mantle ang meron si Elijah at that time. Yun na lang yung pinangahawakan niya. Why? Because what was happening in the time of Elijah, in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1, it says here, And Ahab told Jezebel, his wife, all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Why? Because if you remember, two weeks ago, we've talked about this, right? What God says and what the world says. So, alala niyo po ba yung preaching na yan? And it was a showdown. Elijah told the people of Israel, told the prophets of, of, uh, of Baal, Sige, put your bull there. I'm gonna put my sacrifice here. Whoever wins, siya yung, siya yung totoong Diyos. And what happened? Walang say po yung world. Walang say si Baal. And ang pinaka nag, na, nanalo po sa showdown na yun is what God says, for you to worship, worship, and worship. And the king of Israel, who is Ahab, was really in awe. Oh, wow, amazing. Fire came down from heaven, down to, their, down to the sacrifice of Elijah. The whole Israelites were amazed. They were in awe. Oh. But when King Ahab, the king of Israel at the time, was close to his breakthrough to really receiving God, someone held him back. Someone held him back. And it was his wife, Jezebel. May nag-hold back sa kanya. And sino ba tong si Jezebel? You know what? Jezebel, pag tinignan natin sa dictionary, it's a name synonymous to evil. So kung tayo po ay magkakaanak ngayon, uh, medyo magdalawang isip po tayo kung Jezebel po yung ipapangalan natin sa kanya kasi ang meaning pala niya is evil. Bakit po siya evil? Because in their time, alam niyo po, she massacred all the prophets of God. Almost all the prophets of God pinapatay ni Jezebel. Why? Because she wants to promote idolatry in the land. You don't need to worship God, the one true and living God. You worship the idols. You worship the world. You worship Baal. Yan, yan ang pinupush niya. And you know what? It's holding. It's holding them back. Kaya po, ano po nangyari? In verse 2, it says, Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Why? Kasi si Elijah, pinapatay niya po lahat ng prophets ni Baal. And what happened? Si Jezebel po, yung wife ni yung King Ahab, was very, very angry. And right now, Jezebel wants to destroy the life of Elijah. Jezebel wants to destroy the man of God. And you know what? This is what Jezebel's spirit does to us. It destroys our spirit. It destroys you. It destroys me. How? By holding us back. At ngayon po, ayan po yung ayaw na ayaw po natin for this year. It's the first day of the year. It's January 1. And syempre, we don't want this spirit, right? We don't want an evil spirit. We don't want anything holding us back. Why? Kasi January 1 pa lang. There are 364 days to go. At mahirap if we're gonna if we're going to move in this year with something holding us back. So let's bow down our heads and let us pray before we continue with God's word. Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Lord God, thank you, Lord God, for a wonderful 2016. It was a great, significant year, Lord God. And thank you, Lord God, for your blessings. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for your favor, Lord God. We may not miss, Lord God, to thank you for what had happened in the past, Lord God. Lord God, yes, there are so many uncertainties, Lord. But Lord God, we just want to thank you, Lord God, for all the miracles, for the, all the amazing things, the ups and downs of our lives that brought us right here in January 1, Lord God. And Lord God, right now, we want to start it right, and we're starting it with you. We want to set the tune, Lord God. You, Lord God, be in our midst. And today, we just ask for your anointing. We ask for your wisdom. We ask for your favor. And Lord God, we claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everybody shout. Amen and amen. Sige po, palakpangan po natin ang ating Panginoon. Amen and amen. So we're gonna see today, uh, nag-take effect kaya yung Jezebel spirit. 
did Jezebel achieve her, her mission? Tignan po natin sa life ni Elijah. And if you have your Bibles, let's look at it in the next verse. In verse 3 to 4, it says, And when Elijah saw that, when Elijah heard what Jezebel was telling, when Elijah heard the messenger of, of, uh, of, of Jezebel, this is what he did. He arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree, and he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. So this is how it looks like. This is where, Je uh, this is where Elijah is. He is in Jezreel. Why? Because this is where God met with Elijah and all the people. And you know what? Because he heard that Jezebel was running after him. Gusto ni Jezebel patayin si Elijah. He ran for his life going down to Beersheba. So he talagang karipa siya. He ran for his life kasi ayaw uh, papatayin siya ni, ni, ano yun, ni Jezebel. Eh. And he left his servant there. So ayaw niya ng extra, uh, extra responsibility, extra accountability. Uh, baka hindi tama yung heart ko, hindi tama yung spirit ko. Diyan ka na lang muna sa Beersheba. You're safe there. And what he, did he do? He traveled down into the wilderness. So, siguro po, some of us here are in the wilderness when, when 2017, uh, na, uh, pumasok in 2017. And this is, how, uh, tw uh, here, this is how a wilderness looks like. It's like a desert. At mag-isa na lang po si Elijah. At siguro po, nandyan po yung tampo moments niya kay Lord. Siguro, sinisipa-sipa niya yung sand. Galit siya sa mundo. Galit siya sa sarili niya. And talagang nagre-reklamo siguro siya at that time, Lord, but ganito ang nangyari sa akin? Lord, bakit ganito? Papatayin ako ni Jezebel. Di ba? So, yun po yung nangyari kay, kay Elijah. And when he was in the desert, ang natagpuan niya po is one broom tree. At sabi niya kay Lord, Lord, in this broom tree, I want out. I don't like anymore to serve you. I don't want anymore to continue my life. Lord God, at this broom tree, at this one little broom tree, I'm gonna sleep here, Lord, and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to die. So what could we see in the, in the life of Elijah right now? You know what? Elijah is not afraid of dying. Why? Because Elijah, what, the reason why he ran away, why? Because he was in pain. Why? Because he gave everything that he, got, he, he, he has. Lord, I gave you my all. I served you for the whole 2016. And Lord, right now, I'm in pain, Lord. Why? Because why do I deserve this? Why do I deserve na si Jezebel hahabulin yung life ko and I'm gonna be killed, Lord. This is not the reward that I expected. Lord, hindi ganito yung ina-expect from you. And you know what? Our spirit is destroyed when life seems unfair. Bakit tanong nga yung katabi mo? Unfair ba yung life sa'yo? Diba? When our spirit is destroyed when life is unfair. Parang may recently last week, may isa akong story na kuha sa dad ko kasi meron siyang friend from college. Uh, at alam niyo po, nung, nung days na medyo nagbabackslide yung dad ko sa Christianity, ito yung nakasama niya eh, na during college. At alam niyo po, nung, ang payo sa kanya nung, nung kaibigan niya, uh, pare, ano, mag-backslide na ako, hirap maging Christian. Ang hirap pala nito, maging born again. So ano sabi ng, ano, sabi ng friend niya, pare, okay lang yan. Mag-inuma na lang tayo. So yun po yung, yun yung ginawa nung, ano, yun yung pinag-usapan nila. And guess what? So nag-inuman nga sila. So patuloy yung pag-backslide ng dad ko at that time. But you know what? After a few years, naghiwalay na sila from college. Hindi na po sila nakita. At some point, alam niyo po, uh, alam po yung, yung friend niya na to, lumabas po sa news. Ewan ko po nabalita niya to. In Baguio, meron po palang nanakaw na bata. Why? Because at that time, pregnant po yung wife ng friend ng dad ko at uh, pinanganak po yung baby sa Baguio. And guess what? After po pinanganak, immediately after pinanganak, may kakonsyaba pala sa, sa nurse, mga nurse, yung baby po, anong ginawa? Ninakaw po at binenta sa iba. And you know what? Until this point, hindi po nila kilala yung anak nila. Until this point, hindi po nila natagpuan yung anak nila. And grabe, di ba? How, how unfair life is. Siguro naman, nagtatrabaho ng maayos yung pamilya, yung magulang, they did everything they, uh, 
kung anong pinapagawa ni Lord or anong tamang gawin sa buhay nila. So, pregnant yung babae. Ano, ano, ano bang mali, Lord? Pero ano nangyari? Wow. Ninakaw na lang. Ganun-ganun na lang. So, how unfair life is. Right? Ba't ganun? Minsan di natin maintindihan yung mga ganun pagkakataon. Kaya, dumating din po sa ganun point si Elijah. In verse 5 to 8, it says, Then as he lay and, and slept under a broom tree. So, nandun po siya under a broom tree. Sabi niya, Lord, tulog na lang ako. Lord, Minsan ganun tayo, di ba? Marami tayong problems in life. Siguro nung December 31, ang dami natin pinagdadaanan. At Lord, gusto ko, Lord, pagtulog ko, paggising ko, bukas, okay na. Wala na akong problema. Everything is settled. Sana ganun talaga. But mas malala po si Elijah, Lord, Lord, matutulog na ako under a broom tree at Lord, bog mo na akong gisingin. I'm ready to die right here, right now. I'm ready to die take away my life. But, mahal siya ni Lord, suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Arise and eat. Then, he looked and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and laid down again. So this is usual for Elijah's life na si God maggagawa ng miracle Sa buhay ni Elijah, papakainin siya ng ravens, gagamitin ni Lord ang angel to feed him. So this is usual. But you know what? What's, what's the expected outcome from Elijah is after he eats, after he drinks, sabi niya, Lord, okay, Lord, I'm all good. I'm full. I'm, I'm satisfied. I'm fulfilled. Lord, whatever happened last 2016, it's over, God. Last night, Lord, God, lahat ng problema ko, iniwan ko na. And right now, 2017, I'm game on. I'm gonna go all the way. I'm gonna go all out. I'm ready for, Dece- uh, for January 1. Lord, excited now for 2017. But what happened to him? After he ate, after he drank, he laid down again. Why? Because he was really burned out. Why? Because when life is unfair, it makes us burned out. It makes us just lie down again, just sleep down again. Lord, ayoko na. Gusto ko nang mamatay. I want to end my life already. And, hindi po nagtapos doon si Lord. And an angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is, is too great for you. So sinasabi ni Lord, uh, Elijah, yes, I know what you're going through right now. I know you're stressed. I know you're going through tough times. I know you're, you're going through these problems, challenges, crisis, uh, confusion in your life right now, but arise, eat, and drink. Why? Kasi hindi pa tapos yung mission mo on earth. Hindi ka pa tapos. Your purpose is not yet fulfilled. At kung ako si Elijah, Lord, di ka ba nakakaintindi? Lord, burn out nga ako eh. Lord, pagod nga ako eh. Lord, stressed out ako. Ayoko nang mabuhay. Lord, ayoko na. Lord, okay na ako dito. Pero sabi Lord, hindi. Kain ka, kumain ka pa. Uh, kulang pa yung kinain mo kagabi. So kain ka pa ng marami ngayon. Bakit? Because the journey is too great for you. And so he did. And that's what he did. So he arose and ate and drank. And he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountains of God. So you could just imagine he's really burned out. He's really stressed out. So he's traveling with a heavy heart for 40 days and 40 nights. Experience you na ba yun? Ang bigat ng pakiramdam. Siguro pagpasok ng year na to, parang hindi natin maintindihan, but ganun parang, parang there's something heavy in me. Parang may baggage ako in my life. Lord, but ganun parang pagpasok ng January 1, parang ang bigat ng feeling ko. Hindi ko maintindihan. So tayo, January 1 pa lang, hindi pa tapos. But Elijah was doing it for 40 days and 40 nights. So from, from the wilderness, ito po siya. From the wilderness, he went 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Horeb with a heavy heart. Mabigat ang kanyang karamdaman, mabigat ang kanyang pinagdadaanan. Lord, ayoko na eh. Suko na ako. Ayoko nang lumakad ulit. And what happened? And you know what? When, when Elijah is in the mountain, what does he usually do? When he's in the mountain, he usually worships God. 
When you're on the mountain, when, when you're on the mountain top, when you're going there, what will you do? We will worship, worship, worship. But a man of God didn't do that. This is what the man of God did. This is what Elijah did in verse 9. It says, And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. Instead of worshiping God, instead of reading his Bible again, instead of doing his devotions again, what did he do? He stayed in a cave. This is what a cave looks like. And do you remember this cave when we talked about the life of David? So ano ba tong cave na to? This cave is a dark, horrible, and lonely cave. This is a dark moment of your life, a horrible, siguro mabaho yung, yung smell dyan, and you're lonely there, you're just alone there in this dark, horrible, and lonely cave. And kung isipin natin, once again right now, what does a man of God deserve to end up here? in this dark, horrible, lonely place of his life. He, he's done everything good. He's done all those miracles. Lord, I've performed everything for you. I've done great for you. But Lord, why am I ended up here in this cave? And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said, and God said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? And this is the same word that God is telling us right now. Maybe we're, we're in our crucial moments. Maybe right now we're in our cave, in our dark, horrible, lonely cave. And God is asking us, God is asking me, God is asking you, what are you doing here? What am I and you doing with your life right now? And you know what? This is what Elijah said to God. So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Lord, this is the situation, Lord. Let's make it simple. Lord, kita mo yung Israelites. Kita mo si Jezebel. You, you saw what happened there. So basically, Lord, I've given my all. I've been very zealous. It says here, I've been very zealous. But what happened to me? I give, gave my all to you. But what happened? They, take, they wish to take my life. Ito yung reward ko, Lord. Bakit ganon? Lord, do I deserve this? And you know what? When we're in this situation of our lives, it seems reasonable to just destroy our lives. Lord, okay na to. Okay na ako dito. Lord, life is unfair. It's reasonable that I would end my life here already. But this is what God told Elijah in the next verse. It says, Then God said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. You know, God was commanding Elijah, No, go out. Worship, worship, worship. But what did Elijah do? A man of God did not follow. Why? Because our spirit is destroyed when God seems unreasonable. Bakit? Kasi, Lord, pagod na nga ako eh. Lord, ito na nga yung situation ko, Lord. Lord, talaga ba? Ito talaga yung pinapagawa mo? Tatayo pa ako doon, magde-devotion pa ako, mag-worship pa ako. Lord, is that what you really want? Why? Because what is Elijah expecting from God? Elijah is expecting that, Lord, just take away my problem today. Gusto niyo po ba yun? Di ba? May marami tayong problems for last year. Marami tayong problems dadating this year. Or right now, we're in, our, in, we're in our problems right now. We have our own problems right now. And in-expect natin si God, Lord, tanggalin mo na lang yung problema ko ngayon and everything is gonna be all right. Everything is gonna be okay already. Yun yung inexpect niya, Lord. Tapusin mo na yung life ni Jezebel. Tapusin mo na yung mga is prophets ni Baal, and it's over, Lord. Okay na. But what happened? And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. So when the wind was blowing. Shh, 
outside the cave in the mountain. Shh, the rocks was, were falling apart. But what happened? Tinanong, tinig, nag-peak siguro si, si Elijah out of the cave. Uh, patay na kaya si Jezebel? Patay na kaya yung problema ko? Uh, wala na kaya akong problema? Wala na kaya sila? But it was just a normal wind. Just a normal wind because God was not there. And after wind, what happened after wind? After wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in an earthquake. The, the ground shook. The land was shaking. And what happened? At tinatanong ni Elijah, oh, nagunaw na ba yung Israel? Wala na ba yung problema ko? Wala. Parang nandyan pa rin eh. Nothing happened. It was just a normal earthquake because God was not there. God was not there. And finally, after an earthquake, there was a fire. God used this fire to do a miracle. God used this fire to, to change the heart of the king. The God used this fire to change the heart of the people. And anjan pa kaya yung problem ko? Anjan pa kaya yung problem ni Elijah? The problem was still there because God was not in the fire. It was just a normal fire. So, very disappointing, right? Very unreasonable. Wala namang ginagawa to si Lord. Eh. God seems unreasonable. And then suddenly, after the, after the earthquake, after the fire, what happened? In verse 12, it says, this is what happened. And after the fire, a still small voice. After all those loud things, shh, earthquake, fire, all those amazing things. Wala dun si Lord. And suddenly, God spoke to Elijah in a very sweet, still, small voice, probably saying his name, Elijah. 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 Why? Because Elijah was expecting those things, the wind, the earthquake, and the fire, to, to destroy his problems, to destroy uh, Jezebel and Israel. But little did he know that the shaking, the wind, the earthquake, the fire, was for him, was for Elijah. The shaking of his life was for him. Probably something needs to be fixed in his heart. He could not see it. Something must be fixed in his mind, in his spirit. But he doesn't see it because he's looking at the problem. Lord, tapusin mo na yung problem. But hindi eh. kailangan palang ishake sa lives natin. And what happened? Wala na siya nagawa. He heard the voice of God. The sweet, still, small, small voice of God calling him, Elijah. Elijah. And, and he came to him and said in verse 13, So it was, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. That's the only time that he went out. And I remember the time when my, my friend, I don't know friend ko siya because ko siya. Eh. So, I ko lang yung friend ko si Abraham. I ko talaga magets why he was punching na nakakover yung face niya. Kala, talaga for all those years, yun yung pinagtatawanan namin sa kanya. Pag nag-gathering ulit, uy, si Abraham, yun sumusuntok ng naka, nakabimpo, di ba? Siya yun, di ba? O, oh, uh, tawa-tawa kami. Hindi ko magets Until just, maybe last Friday. Sabi ko, oh, ba't nga ba niya ginagawa yun? And I realized what he was doing was he was trying to fight. He was trying to fight. He was trying to look strong. But what he was actually doing was he was trying to hide his tears. Because he doesn't want me to see his tears. Because he doesn't want me to see his... He doesn't want his friends, his batch, to see his weakness. Yeah, he's hiding. He's hiding on his mantle. And his mantle was full of tears, was full of pain, was full of weaknesses. You know what? It's the same thing that Elijah did when God called him. I was telling God, Lord, this, this, this is my mantle. 
And this is all I got, Lord. And this mantle, Lord, is full of tears, full of pain for 40 days and 40 nights of running away. It's full of dirt. It's full of my weaknesses. This is me, God. And Lord, here, here, here am I, God. Here am I, Lord. He covered his face, Lord. I, I could just not look at you, Lord, this way, Lord. This is who I am. This is just who I am, Lord. This is who I am. Lord, I've given my all. Because that's what God is asking him when he stepped out of that place. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing, Elijah? This is me. This man, the Lord, is all I've got. I gave my all, Lord. Last year, I gave my all. And here I am. I'm a loser. I'm a failure. I'm nothing, God. This is who I am. So God answered him and said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu the son of Nimshi as king over Israel. And Elisha the son of Shaphat, Abel, Mehola, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. Lord, I don't understand a word. Lord, at this point in my life, looking at who I am, Lord God, I don't understand what you're saying. I don't understand your instructions. I don't understand what I really need to do, Lord. And you know what? That fear holds us back because we're uncertain of what we need to do today, what we need to do tomorrow, what we need to do for this whole year. It holds us back and we're so afraid of it. But God says, oh, could you just, can I take a look of that mantle of yours? Can you just can you just remove it right now that you may see clearly what I want to happen in your life, what I want to happen in your year today. Because this is my plan for you. In verse 17 to 18, it says, It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Elijah, Elijah, church, you there, AJ, nothing can escape the power of God. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever it may be, it's nothing in God's hands. He's going to answer you today. Not only that, yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Make a sama ka pa, you have 7,000 people there longing and wanting my worship, wanting to praise me. Today, you're, you're, you're sad that you're alone, not anymore. I have a plan for your life today. This is what happens. Everything becomes clear when God speaks. When God speaks in your life, when God speaks in our church, everything becomes clear. Why? Because in our time before, it seemed that it is already enough. Okay na. Okay na na nandito lang ako. Okay nang mamatay ako in a broom tree. Okay na na mamatay ako in a cave. I don't want to go out of my cave already, Lord. I'm settled here. And it seemed that God was silent. God was not answering in the praise and worship. God was not answering in my devotion. God was so silent. But He just seemed silent. Because while He was silent, He was actually preparing everything for your future. Amen po ba dun? Amen. Go just give God a very best clap offering. He just seems silent, but He's working on it. 
He's working on you. He's working on this year of your life today. But this is the command of God to Elijah. God said, go to Damascus. Go there. Wow, layo. So far. And this is the last thing. Our spirit is destroyed when the journey seems unpractical. Napunta na ba kayo sa pagudpod? Ano? So far, 12 hours. Pagud na. Pudpud pa, di ba? Sabi nga nila. So, so far, ako. Ano, ang hirap bumalik dun. Kasi sobrang layo. It's unpractical. Kung wala ka rin naman gagawin talaga. So, si Elijah was gonna travel that. He has no car. He's gonna travel by foot. Wow. Imagine 12 hours. May coach tayo. Si Elijah wala. And not only that, he needs to pass back his, all of his fears. Ito na naman. Dadaanan ko si Jezebel. Dadaanan ko si Israel. Lord. Are you serious, God? Are you serious? I'm gonna pass all those people again. Those people who had hurt me. Those people who had done harm to me. Those people who wants me to be destroyed. Oh, man. Are you serious, God? And not only that, and I still don't know your plan for my life. Until this point, I'm going there, but I don't know. I ko pa rin alam anong mangyayari for my 2017. I'm still uncertain. But because he received God's word. Sige Lord, sabi niya. In verse 19 to 20, it says, So he departed from there. So, ginawa niya po, inanoint niya po yung mga kings. To the last point, pumunta po siya kay Elisha. He found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with the twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he was with the twelve. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. Nakita niya si Elisha, so anoint now. I don't even know what it means. I've been anointing kings, but I've never anointed someone I don't know, Elisha. So he just threw the mantle, okay, that's yours. And he left. Alis na ako, bye. Bye, Elijah. Eh, bye, Elisha. Wow. He was just thinking, it was seemingly, na, it was just something simple, and he left already. But little did he know, this is what happened. And he left. Elisha left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please, let me kiss my father and my mother and then I will follow you. And he said, Elijah said to Elisha, Go back again for what have I done to you? Elijah was so surprised. Elijah was so amazed. What happened to you, Elisha? I just threw my mantle on you. It's, I know it's just an ordinary mantle. It's all about it. I just threw it on you. And why are you doing this? Why are you following me? What's your problem? But you know what? Because this mantle was touched by God. And when God touches something, when God touches your ordinary mantle, the mantle you've been using to hide something, hide your life, when God touches it, it's impossible that God will not do something great about it. Impossible. We just give God our very best clap offering to that. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you may not understand what's going on with your life right now, and I'm going through that time right now as well. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about life right now. But what God is telling me right now, you, you know what? You don't need to understand everything. You don't need to say anything and you don't need to be sure about everything, about your life. My life has been sure for the past years. My life has been certain for the past years and right now, 25, siguro ito yung quarter life crisis, I'm going through that. and I'm uncertain of what's gonna happen next of my 2017 but it is God's leading. You know what? Just take life step by step. Just step by step. Day by day, week by week, month by month. Because isn't life more exciting that way? Tiwala ka lang sa akin. Akong bahala sa'yo. Si God na 
Ang bahala sa atin. And that's what happened in verse 21. So Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he arose, Elijah arose, Elisha arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. So right now, all problems solved. Aayusin na ni God lahat. At ngayon, little did Elijah know, may mga kasama pala siya in his journey. May mapapasahan pala siya ng kanyang mga gagawin. Hindi na pala mag si Elijah. May kasama siya gawin ang misyon ng Panginoon para sa kanyang buhay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your very best clap offering again. Because life seems like this. Spirit destroyed because of these things. And when we look at it, parang simple lang naman eh. It's just probably a week of my life. Probably just this, just this year. Yeah. It's just something small, a small bit, uh, bit of my life. But because we're hiding, there's a mantle in front of us. Little did we know that this, this is what is destroyed in our life. If you continue like this, you continue forward like this, what's destroyed, our perspective is destroyed. We don't see things clearly. We don't see life clearly. And because of that, what is destroyed, our obedience to God is destroyed. Ayaw natin sumunod. Ayaw na natin follow kay God. Sa dulo, what is destroyed, it is our life. In reality, this is what's happening to us. That's why it's really heavy going through heavy times in our lives right now. So today, maybe be still holding on to our ordinary mantle. Trying to hide our tears. Trying to hide the pain of our lives. Trying to hide who we are. Trying to cover all those things. Ayun natin pakita kay God. Ayun natin pakita sa tao. We want to look strong for 2017. But the reality is, Lord, ang bigat eh. Ang bigat ng pinagdadaanan ko ngayon, Lord. I'm not sure, Lord. Sabi ni God, you don't need to be sure. You don't need to be certain. Find cover in my wings. Because God says, I am more than enough. Jesus is more than enough. You don't need to know it. You don't need to understand the entirety of life. I don't need to understand it too. Even though I've been trying hard to understand it, you don't need to. Because Jesus says, I am more than enough. I'm more than enough for you. I'm more than enough for myself. I am more than enough. Jesus is more than enough for this church. Hallelujah. And right now, could you just bow down your heads today? And you could just speak to God. Because we're going to have our communion service today. And God is telling you, all you need is me. All you need is me. All you need is me. And nothing will hold you back. Hallelujah. So as you prepare the communion, let me just continue to pray there and talk to your God. Hallelujah. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you. 
All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. Church, can we invite you once again to please stand up and take your communion elements?
cried a little louder for Jesus. All I need is you. Yes, God, hear our cries, Lord. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Today, God knows your heavy hearts. God knows our every fear. God knows what you're going through right now. God knows the confusion in your mind right now. God knows your anxieties of this year right now. All your fears, all your worries. God knows it. And today, this communion is not just a, a tradition, it's not just a practice, but we're doing this because we are proclaiming the Lord's death. And in the Lord's death, there is power. In the res resurrection of Jesus Christ, there is power. And nothing is impossible for Him. This year is not impossible for Him. It may seem impossible. But when God touches it, nothing is impossible. So you take part of the communion. Let's really put this into our hearts that God may truly move in our lives. Today. And it says in God's word, for I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread when he, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body. I just broke it for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So I'll partake of the bread. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Here we are, Lord God, in front of you. They could not pretend, Lord God. We're strong. They may try it, Lord God, to go here in church, step on those doors and try to, to just show, Lord God, everybody, to cover our weaknesses right now, Lord. But we could not hide it, Lord. We could not cover it up, Lord God. It will just really come out, Lord. But you're telling us right now, you don't need to hide it. You don't need to pretend here in my house. Just let me move. Just let me move in your life today. Hallelujah. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it. it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let's all drink of the cup. Lord Jesus Christ, here we are in front of you. And Lord God, though we have heavy hearts, Lord, heavy minds right now, heavy spirits, or it's, it's not an ordinary Sunday, Lord. This is not an ordinary start of the year, Lord. You see us right now. You see our struggles right now. But in spite of that, Lord, we're just gonna follow you. Here is our life, Lord. Here is our mantle. Here is our ordinary mantle. Lord, please touch it, God. Please touch our lives, God. Please, Lord, touch this year, Lord. 
Right now, it may be an ordinary start of the year, Lord. Yeah, the usual. But Lord, when you touch it, when you touch it, it's going to be different. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be significant. It's going to be great because you're here in our midst. And could we just sing that song again? Singing, God, all we need is you. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. Just raise up our hands today. In desperation for God's touch, Lord. All I here I am, Lord. Is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. Lord, we actually need you right All now. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. Given our loudest clap offering today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Lord God, thank you for this wonderful day. Lord God, thank you, Lord God, for seeing our tears, seeing our pain, Lord God. Right now, we just don't need any solution right now, Lord. All we need, Lord God, is you to see us, is you to feel us, for you, Lord God, to know what we're going through. Lord God, we had a great year, but last week, maybe, Lord God, you were not able to end it right. We've gone through tough times, unexpected times. Someone got sick, someone passed away. Lord God, hard times, tough times, trouble, Lord God. But Lord God, as we enter, Lord God, this year, Lord God, we don't need to pretend, Lord God, that we're okay, that we're good, we're strong. Lord God, right now, we take off our mantle. We take off our covering, Lord. All, all, all the things that we're hiding, no more hiding right now. This is who we are, God. And you appreciate that. This is who we are. This is who we are, God. And in our nothingness, in our destroyed spirits, in our heavy hearts, as you see it, as you touch it, you're going to make a difference, Lord. You're going to do something great in our year. 2017 is our year. And we'll just give you back all the glory and praise. Amen. Let's give God our very best clap offering. And God will be moving in this year. Hallelujah.
Today, we just lift up our tithes and offering to God. Hallelujah. It's such a blessing to give to God on the first day of the year, on the first Sunday of the year. Wow. And Lord God, as you raise up our tithes and offering, Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, that for 365 days last year, 366 days last year, Lord, you never left us, Lord. You were there with us all the way. And Lord, right... And right now, Lord, and right now, Lord, wow, Lord, right now, for another 365 days, Lord, we're certain. We may not be uncertain of what the exact things to do, Lord, but we're certain, we're sure that you're going to be with us once again in this year. And Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, we lift up our tithes in offering. We lift up to you these tithes. We don't want anything holding us back. We don't want money to hold us back. We don't want our work to hold us back. We don't want our businesses to hold us back, Lord God. There's no point, Lord God, in that. Lord God, we just lift up our finances to you. Lord God, because you're our God. And Lord God, you're the solution to every problem. God, right now, we've been open to you, Lord. Lord God, we've... Allowed you, Lord God, to move, Lord God, in our mantle. And we took it off. And this is who we are. This is just who we are. Plainly, this is who we are. And Lord God, we know, we believe that you're going to do something with our lives, with our year. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, we have high hopes. We are in joy, Lord God. You're going to move in this year, Lord. We claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, Amen. And amen. God bless everyone. Happy New Year and have a blessed day. Everybody.